Profiles. I'm your host today, Paula Hersey, and I'm here with Stephanie Pavante and Polly Goddard from the Senior Service Corps, a program of Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands, and they are field work coordinators for the Senior Environment Corps. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Stephanie, I hear you're new. There's a new position. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your position and where you're located? Sure. Well, we're located, the office is on Camp Edwards. So we cover um, from Barnstable up to Buzzards Bay, doing all sorts of environmental projects to help out our service partners. Okay. And that consists of um, things like osprey nest monitoring, uh, water sampling for a couple different of our service partners. Um, we also do bluebird nest monitoring. Oh, that's it's, cool. Yeah, it's there's quite a variety. We, uh, we do mosquito monitoring on the base and that checks for Tripoli e and West Nile virus. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So when you say we, who's we? We consists of me and the volunteers that help out. Who okay, are, and those volunteers are from Elder Services? Yep. Um, so they participate in our program. You have to be 55 or older to join and okay. they come out and help us. They love it. Great. So I know, Polly, you've been in this position for uh, several years now. I have. And uh, I've actually worked on a project with you uh, this past spring, which was uh, an amazing to see how large the Senior Corps is. Can you tell us a little bit how the program got started and, and how uh, it's grown to the, the numbers that I saw um, at our project? Sure. The program um, is actually a, a retired senior volunteer program. It's part of the, the community. The, Corporation for National and Community Service. I never say that quite right. Um, and so we take volunteers from all walks of life. Folks have come, they're retired from being teachers or doctors or who knows what. And they come together and, uh, and do projects. Some of them are, do individual placements, like at the Museum of Natural History or Wellfleet Audubon or a, a land trust. And some of them will do group projects, like the group project that you saw with us at Capabilities. Oh, that's so interesting. And 55 and plus, uh, it seems like that's the that's the new 45 in, in terms is there's lots of things that they can do for volunteer and the environment is just so important to us here on the Cape. Um, do you get a lot of uh, a wait list program or how do they how do they get involved? How do they start the process to, to um, be a senior core uh, environment uh, member? Well, we do recruitment events like okay. this. Okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and we go out to different volunteer um, recruitment events. And we try to just get the word out. The best way for us is for one volunteer to tell somebody else who's not a current volunteer. That's our that's sure. how we get the best people who are going to be a really good fit for the program. We don't have a wait list, but we do have about 550 active volunteers wow. in, in the whole Senior Service Corps program across the Cape. My goodness, 500 plus, huh? Yeah. That's just mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. So that probably precludes why we've expanded from Barnstable up as your position is sort of a new position? It's not new. No? I, Stephanie is new to the position. New the, to yeah. the position, okay. Yeah. So what are your plans and, and how are you reaching out to the folks in that area? I know Mashby obviously has a large uh, uh, area of 55 and plus living. I mean, there's lots of neighborhoods up there. Is there um, certain folks that you're looking for for different projects? or? Um, I'm looking for anyone who's just willing to donate their time and efforts. Um, when I go out and do certain surveys, you know, I'll have people come up to me and ask me questions, and when they do that, I just kind of slip it in there, like, hey, you know, you can volunteer with us if you really want to. <laughs> so that intake process, uh, you know, maybe I want to get my husband involved. <laughs> for instance. For instance. <laughs> um, special skill sets or you know I know he loves certain things in the environment the you know the mosquito control what kind of skills do I need to, to be a volunteer in the environment corps you really don't need any um, you know either I'll train you on whatever project is coming up okay. and that I have a background for or certain projects you actually get trained by the service partner 
So for instance, um, we work with Buzzards Bay Coalition for okay. water sampling and at the beginning of each season they have a session where you go and you learn how to do everything. So it's, oh. it's really easy. Wow, that, that does sound easy. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> and if anyone ever has questions, I always tell the volunteers, right. you know, feel free to ask me questions. And if I can't answer them, right. you know, I'll ask the appropriate person and get back to you as soon as I can. So service partners, um, that seems to be a large part of this program is that folks that are nonprofits or with the environment can come to the Environment Corps and say, geez, we, we need some volunteers for a particular project? Pretty much. Um, you have to be a nonprofit or not for profit organization. Okay. And, um, or a municipal agency, government agency. Municipal and a, okay, yep. excellent. Um, what about the service partner? Do they have to come to you or do you go find them? It kind of goes both ways. Sometimes okay. I'll have service partners asking, hey, do you have volunteers for da da da? Right. Or there are times where I seek out the service partner and say, we're looking for stuff to do. Do you need help with anything? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Time-wise, you know, I mean, uh, I think he still wants to get a golf game in once a week, you know. You know, there's the TV time kind of thing. What commitment is a, a, a person looking at when they start to volunteer for this program? There's really no minimum or maximum that you can volunteer. I mean. We the more the merrier. We require one hour per year. One hour per year. To stay active with the program, you have to do one hour per year. One hour per so year. So I think he can probably handle that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but we have volunteers who will, they'll commit to, you know, 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week, depending on what they're doing. And um, what if I go to Florida in the winter? We work around it. We work it's around whatever whatever a volunteer is willing to commit, we're happy to take. And our service partners are thrilled to have whatever help we can offer. That's amazing. And again, the project that I saw, um, uh, some of the, the folks at Capabilities actually volunteer on their own there as well. They do. So mm -hmm. it opens up an avenue to explore other volunteer opportunities. That's right. Yeah. So two months on the job, What's your thoughts? Are you, you excited to grow the program? Are you, you've got a, different ideas? Or I love this position. It's so, it really is an eye opener for me. And, um, you know, I just want to help out our service partners and elder services as well. And hopefully we'll be able to recruit more people. And we've already started getting some new projects. So try and liven it up. Some new projects, can you talk about those a little bit? Um, well, one of them is the Osprey Nest Monitoring. That's cool. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I've been out a lot this past week. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I've, I've seen folks, um, obviously there's nests all over Cape Cod as the Ospreys come back, and it's just, it's fascinating um, to watch these, these birds. Um, it's amazing. So the monitoring, what does that entail? Is it going and watching them or? Yep, so all you need is really a set of binoculars or if you have one, a spotting scope. Okay. And um, you just go out to where the nests are located and you watch them, I believe it's every two weeks at minimum for at minimum of 10 minutes at a time. Wow. Yep, and you watch the little ones grow. Wow, and, and you record that information, or, or yep. and where does that go back to? Your service partner, who, who's right. the partner for that? So the, the partner is Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary. Oh, yeah. And um, we have a data sheet for them, so we just fill it out every time we go. And How many then, fish did they get? You know, did daddy give it to them? Did mommy give it <laughs> yeah, to them? Exactly. That's great. And uh, yeah, at the end of the season, once everyone's gone down south, you just hand in your data sheet. and. That's so yep. cool. So we have the fun part of the job. We get to do the, you know, checking out of wildlife and doing all that. Right. Somebody else gets to do the processing the right. data. So we're that's, good with that. That's the perfect volunteer exactly. position. It really you know, is. I always look at volunteer positions going, the data entry. Mm, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some people like that, though. Some people do like that, yeah. We do. We have, you asked before about the mm -hmm. variety. We have people who will take pictures. That's their volunteer activity. They'll, oh. they'll enter data. They'll um, work at the front desk at the museum. They'll be docents. They'll be naturalists. So there's a huge, huge variety of opportunities. Pretty much 
much. You don't, you know, people think, oh, environment, I have to be st sturdy and rugged and physically capable. Right. You really don't. Mm -hmm. To help out the environment, you just need to have a passion about it and be able to do something that supports right. it in a variety, you know, there's a variety of different ways. That is just, uh, I like your job. <laughs> I love my too. job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get to be outside. Well, maybe the winter part of it is not so good, but the, the this time of year, you know, out hanging out with the bluebirds and the, the bluebird thing fascinates me. I saw a, a bluebird once in my yard, once oh, in neat. 25 years. But there's a program that monitors them as well. You mentioned that? So, so we're on the base mm -hmm. for my office, and there are a lot of bluebird boxes out there in the yeah. grassland area yep. and also at the golf course. And so it's about every seven to ten days our volunteers will go out and just check on them. Oh. Um, so at the beginning of the season they'll look to see if nests are being built and then as time progresses you look for the eggs and then if, it, if they've hatched yeah. or haven't. Um, and then when they fledge or so when they fly away right. and are able to live on their own. And, and who is your service partner there? Is it the base that's the partner, or is it's, it another environment? It's uh, the Natural Resources Office for okay. Camp Edwards. Excellent. Yep. That's really cool. I, I hadn't heard of that program before, and uh, bluebirds fascinate me. Um, there seems to be, uh, you, you see one once, and you're like, oh, I want to see one again. They're just beautiful. you got to go look for them. Yeah, you got to go <laughs> look for them. Excellent. What other cool things can people get involved with, with um, the, the Senior Corps and the environment piece? Uh, we've talked about the birds. Water monitoring? Yep. So, which is really important here on the Cape. It really is. So we work with um, Buzzards Bay Coalition to do water monitoring, yeah. but we also work with, and it's kind of funny because it's at the other end yeah. of, <laughs> of Cape Cod, but we work with Provincetown Center for Coastal Studies. Oh, great organization. Yeah. It is, yes, and they are so nice. Yeah. And um, so for Provincetown, we actually sample in Sandwich. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I saw. I said that so too. So sample water and sandwich for Provincetown. That's yep. That's it's a, interesting. It's all about the health of the bay. Right. The health of the bay. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So they. W what do you do? Just stick a vial in the ocean and bring it up, or in an estuary, or in a marsh? Or? So you go out um, to different designated places and you test the water for things. Well, you look for water temperature. Okay. And then you also look for uh, turbidity which is, you know, how clear the water is. Okay. Um, you look for dissolved oxygen, salinity, so how much salt is in the water, basically. Seventh grade science class. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's physical <laughs> yeah. science. I love it. And you get yeah. to go walk out in, you know, some of the most beautiful parts oh, of Cape yeah. Cod. And really? Yeah. You know fight with a green head sometimes but yeah, yeah that, that's, that's right. coming actually uh, <laughs> uh, July 4th on Sandy Neck Beach can be a, a, a study in doing one of yeah, these exactly. <laughs> exactly. that kind of thing yeah. well this sounds just like a really great program so how about just some information for our viewers today on how they can get involved some websites some phone numbers how can they they get involved in the Upper Cape and then Polly I'll let you give them their information are there two separate numbers um, I do have a separate number for my office Okay. Which is 508-968-5125. 5125, okay. Yeah. And do you have a website that they can get more information from? You can go to the Elder Services website. Which okay, is which is www.e ESCCI.org. Yep. Okay, yep. excellent. And how about you, Polly? Did you have some? I. Uh, I cannot remember my office number. Okay. I never do. I'm hoping it will be on the screen. It will be. <laughs> but emails are a great way to get me as well. Okay. And that's polly.goddard, G-O-D-D-A-R-D, at E-S-C-C-I dot org. That's great. What a fantastic job. I hadn't realized how broad in scope that this environment program for uh, Elder Services really was. We actually do have some volunteers uh, here at the station um, that have been with us for many years, actually, part of a, a program as well. Yeah. So thank you, Stephanie. Thank, thank you. you, Paula. Thank you. I'm Paula Hersey, and this is Profiles.